Hey guys, Dibby right here, and today I want to talk a little bit about something that is more suited for you beginners out there who have gotten into storytelling, drawing comics, creating comics, maybe you're looking to sell them, make a bit of money on the side from it, whatever your goal is, this video is meant to help you guys out who are especially just starting out. And um, I'm hoping that these little tips will help you guys sort of on your way. So let's say, for example, so you're good at writing stories, but you're not particularly good at the drawing side of things. Well, the obvious solution there is that you could maybe commission an artist to do the drawing for you. If, um, you know, if you happen to have some spare cash lying around that you can pay an artist, or you may just have to simply draw it up yourself. And, um, well, I find one of the things that have really helped me out with um, developing my comics, especially with the new Agent Eye issues that I'm working on now, is, um, is one thing is, well, let's say you've drawn up a character, you're pretty used to drawing the character, but sometimes when you, even though you've drawn this character many, many different times, but sometimes when you, say you're doing an action scene or something like that, there's your characters fighting with another character, for some reason, all the posing and the scenes, you know, turn out wrong, or they don't look quite, quite as good as it did maybe in your head. And it's not necessarily the fight, the fight, the, um, the fighting itself, it's pretty much how you've pretty much posed the character and other slight inconsistencies like drawing a character's hand too big and you know little bits and pieces and mistakes that even professionals still do today and still mistakes that I do sometimes well the best way to um, I find a sort of fix that problem is um, when it comes to po to um, posing your character you should definitely be using other poses as a reference so that includes even when the character is just standing around talking like, I used to fall into the trap of drawing my character exactly the same way almost for everything so it'd pretty much be like the same position every time when he's talking you know you just copy and paste the same image change the background a little bit and it was a new image but the problem with that is it can make your comic look a bit boring can look pretty boring to the reader and he's going to catch on hang on this is just the same image over and over again with um all this talking like you're almost trying to avoid putting your character in an action scene because you're not very good at posing the character and um avoiding avoiding that can like i said makes your comic look boring for starters and can be a bad thing because you're not going to progress as an artist doing that. So my advice to you is definitely find something that you can use as a reference from your, for your posing. Whether that is, um, you know, getting a friend to uh, model for you in certain poses and action poses, or um, simply just finding uh, some poses, some pictures of poses on the internet, or even from other, having a look at what other comic artists have done when they've um, done their characters. Like when you read a Marvel comic or a DC comic, have a look at how their um, characters are posed and you can um, you know, try using those as a reference. Now, before some of you might, think it, might be thinking, well, referencing off a pose, isn't that cheating? Aren't you supposed to just draw it all by instinct and whatnot? And if I do use um, this pose from this um, photograph, aren't I just going to get sued for it? Well, actually, no. No, you're not. You're not drawing that person. You're just borrowing that pose and that position that, the, that you want your character to stand. And B, you still got to draw in the features and everything that makes your character your character in that position, in that pose. And by law, you can't copyright a pose. It's a human movement. 
you know, otherwise you'd have people suing each other for walking. Oh, you walk the same way I do. That's it. I am suing you. You hear that? You hear how ridiculous that sounds? It's like, um, it's, it's like when Susie Lou had, pe had people's, um, YouTube videos struck for, um, using her face and using her face. You can't sue like, you can't sue someone for that. You can't by rights have a YouTube video taken down for that. Anyway, it's the sa same sort of thing basically is what I'm getting at. And if you notice in comic books, you'll notice that a lot of comics use sa similar posters that have been done before in other comics. Well, look at Spider-Man for example. Look how many times they reuse the same posies in and whatnot and characters and how many times other characters have used poses similar to what Spider-Man uses. Such as um, Batman, for example. Now, if you look at the two covers where they first two appear, where, when they both appear, it's pretty much... There are differences in the image, but they definitely sort of referenced each other in a certain way. And um, that's not the only example. There are other examples where um, certain char characters have um, used other poses that have been done before, that we've seen in other characters, yet you don't hear anyone, you don't hear any cases of um, lawsuits going on with that, because essentially you you simply just can't copyright a pose and how a character stands. Of course, now if you kept the background exactly the same and kept the exact same expression on the p character's face or whatever, then yeah, I could see how that might land you in a little bit of trouble. But ultimately, how a character stands, um, standing up nice and tall with his arms crossed, you know, you, you can't, you can't get done for that. And it is a really good way to improve as an artist and stop the problem of you, say, drawing your, drawing your character's hand too big one day, because you, you'll actually learn how to draw a character's hand properly and all the other body parts properly because when you're using another pose as a reference that gets drill, drilled into your head and when you start drawing your own poses your um, character pretty is going to look as right as you can get it if that makes any sense at all so let's say you've done that you've done your first comic you've, you've done all that first issue you got some awesome action scenes and it's an awesome looking comic that isn't gonna bore your reader to tears because um you didn't change the positioning in their characters in your characters at all so right so you got something pretty awesome and flashy you're ready to get it on a self-publishing platform and you're ready to get sales um ad revenue all that good stuff and, um, so, but the problem is, you don't have any money to, um, invest in, in online advertising, marketing, and things like that. So, you're finding it really hard to get your fan base up. Yes, you're tweeting, you're tweeting your images every now and then when you're done. You're getting those retweets or not. You're getting yourself out there in that way as best you can. But how are you able to get money to advertise for your comic and to um, at least get some sort of um, return for the effort you're putting in for your comic and well there is a bit of a crafty solution for this and this is a strategy I apply even now even now that I got a bit of a fan base and frequent buyers I still like to apply this strategy because it always frees up some money that I can use for advertisement costs and to go towards, you know, building a website, things like that. If I choose to do so, such a thing. And um, basically, basically what I do is, I like to, um, where I put my comics up for sale, for example, my, my ebook PDF copies of my comics, for example, I put that up on lulu.com, that's the site I use, and I recommend you guys might want to use that platform too. And I'll explain why I use that particular site in a minute. I also got my comics on Indie Planet, but it always takes me longer to publish them because 
the, the lack of freeing up the cash that I need to um, actually create the printable versions of my book and be able to buy the proof copy so I can then approve it so it actually gets distributed on the Indie Planet site. So this is what I do. So with my um, ebooks and PDFs, obviously I don't charge as much for those because there's no, because you know it's just the ebook PDF thing. And obviously because they're cheaper, they are what most people go for when people buy my comics. So what I like to do is I, I like to um, when I'm logged out of my account and whenever I've got some spare cash lying around, I like to put that money towards my um, comics that are on my Lulu account. In other words, I will pay full price and buy my comics. And most of what I spend on my comics, because I'm logged out of my account at that time, that means I'm buying as a, as a customer. I'm buying as a customer, which means most of what I spend goes into the, um, the, revenue, the sales and revenue section. And before you go saying, oh, that's just cheating, just you buying your comics it's actually a very smart way to store and save your money that you can free up to use on advertising and markets because if you only if you got a day job where you're only just able to pay the bills and only just get by you're not going to have much you're not going to have much spare money but you can have enough spare money around that you can probably throw into your comics like I do and um, be able to gain money that way to use for your um, advertisement costs and things like that and bring more readers in. And no, it's not cheating. It's like you being your own number one fan in a way. And in a way, it's like a form of self-investment. Now, I like to use Lulu because they don't give you your money straight away. You don't make a sale and then you, straight, you can straight away request to have it put in your account like other places like Indie Planet you can put it in your account straight away when someone buys um, Teespring same thing if someone buys uh, a t-shirt off Teespring um, the seller can put it that money straight into their account straight away and I don't like to do that because I'd get too tempted to use it and spend it and Lulu keeps my money in the um, sales revenue section in there for a month before they pay it out to my PayPal account which gives me more of an opportunity to Opportunity to put more in there so when I do get get that money back into my account it's a bigger return and because my um, my normal source of income tops me up every fortnight it does become again it becomes extra money like I said that I can throw on advertisement costs um, maybe I want to build up a website um, at, or just maybe get some more printable versions of my comics on Indie Planet, ready to go, ready for people to buy and such. And I think this is actually a very smart strategy when starting out, and a strategy you can continue to use even when you start becoming more of a success. And so basically, that's my um, helpful tips on, you know, starting out, drawing, getting better at drawing, and how you can start freeing up money for advertisement pur purposes, so you can start bringing in readers. Now, the other thing I want to mention, let's say you're doing all of that, but you're still not quite getting the getting that readership. You only got maybe a couple of devoted fans, uh, and that's it. And sometimes, a couple of truly devoted fans is all you need. Like, not that long ago, I've had someone who's been buying all my comics now every time I put a new release they would show up they would buy the new comic and um, they would always ask me to um, make more make sure there's more coming I I'm very much looking forward to reading your next comic you know and they don't just buy you know an agent I comic they've bought up everything I had up there at some point and um, yeah so since this person was very enthusiastic and they apparently were sharing um, links to my um, to my stores all the time on their social media and whatnot, or so they were saying, so I decided to um, make this individual a bit of a deal. 
they get fr their comics from me for free from now on, as long as they recommend their recommend the comic to other people. And I find this strategy actually does work in bringing new readers in and getting more sales, because I've actually been getting more sales lately, and something I've been quite proud of. So if you actually do find you've got yourself quite a devoted fan there, be sure to um, offer them a reward for that, for them, um, you know, distributing your comic like that and sharing links and recommending it to, to their friends and such. And definitely offer them the, the opportunity to become a distributor for you. And just another way you could make some more more money off your um, really fun hobby. And a lot of people who get into comics and draw do treat it as a hobby and such and don't really care that they make make that much money from it. They enjoy drawing, they enjoy creating and they just do it. I'm the same way. I'd be happy to keep drawing comics even if I got nothing for it. But it's always just that little bit more rewarding when you do start making that little bit extra for your hard work. So, I hope this video was somewhat helpful for you guys, and I hope, and I hope, uh, I, I at least hope you guys got something out of it anyway, and, um, I'll be back again, uh, talk to you again next time, if there's, um, more about it I can think of to cover, and if not, um, I'm sure I might see some of you guys back again when I continue more Dragon Ball What Ifs, alright, catch you later, and I'll see you guys again next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and um, of course leave your thoughts in your comments. If anyone's got any other better ideas on on starting out, I'd like to hear them. Alright, see you later, and to my um, creators, definitely support each other.